And just to let you know before we start that this webinar is being recorded and uh, the recording will be available on our website after this presentation, so maybe today or tomorrow. Okay, so let's just start. What is cross-validation? Cross-validation is a feature that is accessible from the surface modeling, uh, from the gridding panel, and it works in several steps. In the first step, it computes the grid using all input data points. In the next step, it removes one of the input data points and it recomputes the grid with this point missing. In the next step, it uh, takes the new uh, grid, the new value from the new grid and back interpolates this value to the missing point location. And this way we are getting an estimated value for this point. And this estimated value is then compared with the actual value of this grid in, the, in this point. And this process is being repeated uh, as many times as many input points we have. So for example, if we have 40 input data points, it will run 40 times. Cross-validation is a very useful technique and it allows us to find, for example, outliers, so data points which may be erroneous, uh, like erroneous well picks, um, as well as determine which gridding technique or parameters give me the best prediction ability. And it can also give me an idea of expected error when I am drilling the new location space on the computed grid. And in this webinar, I would like to talk a little bit about each of those points, but specifically I will focus on uh, the second point, which is determining which gridding technique is the best to use for my data. So I will now run the live presentation, and for this presentation I will use Otway Basin data in Victoria, Australia. The data is the courtesy of the Department of Primary Industries in Victoria, and I've selected 43 wells penetrating the Umarala formation, and I'll grid those wells using various gridding algorithms available in Petrosis, and then compare this data and see which gridding algorithm was the best. So let's just move to the software straight away. This is a map of the Otway Basin. Otway Basin is located in the south of Australia, and on this map I have posted a coastline of Australia and also my 43 wells. And these wells, as you can see, they form in some places clusters, so they are really tightly uh, close to each other. On the other places, in the other places, they are scattered. And there is also particularly one area which I marked here with the red rectangle. And this area, uh, which is about, as I measure it over now here, 53 kilometers long and about 25, 20, 25 kilometers wide. This area has no well control. And, and I would like to focus on this area today on this webinar and this demonstration and see um, by gridding uh, all my wells, see which gridding algorithm will give me predict the best surface within this area where there is no well controls. And this is, for example, if I would like to um, drill a new well in this area, I, I will see which gridding algorithm gives me the best prediction, um, the, the best surface and the expected, what is the expected error. So to do that, I need to move to surface modeling. And I have prepared here a workflow, and this workflow consists of few tasks. And all of those tasks will grid the well data, all my input data points, penetrating the Umarala formation. And each of those tasks will um, select different gridding algorithms. So we'll use different gridding algorithms. The first one uses the minimum curvature. The next one, polynomial. The next one, least squares binomial. And then least squares plane, distance weighted averages, and a hybrid. And then I will also change the operation to Kragging. And I will also use Kragging with external drift at the end. So now cross-validation. I can access through the reporting window, and this is switched on at the moment. So and, uh, after each of these tasks, the cross-validation report will pop up. And also I have checked uh, on save this cross-validation report to the CSV file. That means that I can then later on access this file via Excel and open it directly in Excel. So now, um, if I would run, want to run those tasks now, as you remember, they will, each one of them, they would uh, run 43 times uh, because I have 43 input data points, and it will take a while. So that's why I've computed those grids 
earlier, and I'll show you those grids in a moment on the map while I will run the first task. So this task is now running, and on the background I'll show you my results with all computed grids with different algorithms. So the first minimum curvature, and then the polynomial, least squares binomial, and as I run through those grids over here, you'll see that they aren't really that much different from each other. So all those methods, they give me pretty much the same or similar result. So there's no way for me to tell really which method is the best and which gridding algorithm is the best to run through this data and which gridding algorithm gives me the best prediction surface, especially in this area over here. And this is why we need the cross-validation report. So now the cross-validation report should be ready. And this is my cross-validation report. It lists all my input data points, so all my wells, and the UWI and the well number. It also tells me the well location and the z-value, so uh, the peck of the horizon, the Umarala horizon in this well. And then the first z-value uh, is from the grid, so the grid that, computed, um, that was computed using all input data points. The next one is an estimated z value, so the one when this point have been removed and then back interpolated, so this is the back interpolated value, and the delta z is the difference between the estimate and the z value from the grid. And I can now sort this data also by um, the delta z, and it will easily help me to find the outliers, the, the, the wells which have the most, the highest errors, so and the most erroneous. Uh, wells. And for example, wild dog has quite a high error over here, and I can now QC this well, analyze this data further. What I can also do is analyze this data in chart. So I will now post a Z value from the grid against Z value estimated from uh, the cross validation. <coughs> and I will mark those uh, with a color gradient related to delta Z, so to the difference. And the color gradient you can see over here, so if we have any green colors or light blue, light yellowish colors, they are still fine, they are um, still, the, the cross validation is uh, showing us, I mean the cross uh, here shows us that there is a very good re correlation between those points. The correlation also, the R square is 0 0.8, which again we can see that it's very high, yet there are still some outliers, so you can see the red colors and the uh, purple colors over here, and uh, these are all with high um, errors. And if I click on them, they will highlight the wells uh, in my cross-validation report on the background. And again, the wild dog well is popping up here with the highest um, error. So now this cross-validation report pops up uh, in this window, but it also, as you remember, I saved it in an Excel version. So I'll now open it in an Excel, and I've collated all those results um, in, in my Excel document. So you have exactly the same report, exactly the same data here, for minimum curvature, for polynomial, least squares binomial, least squares plane, distance weighted averages, hybrid and the Kriging method. And I have collated all those results on one spreadsheet. And all I took is uh, the delta z, so the difference between the estimated value and the real value from the grid. And this is for all algorithms, so from the minimum curvature up to the Kriging algorithm. And what I've also done is um, I've did some statistics on this data. So I have average here for uh, all those algorithms and the delta z's, average absolute, the maximum delta z, and the standard deviation. And the highest, um, the highest errors, the biggest errors, are marked with a red color, and the lowest values are marked in, uh, with a green color. And first of all, what you can see is that the Kriging method gives me the lowest error. So the difference between the estimated value and the actual value is the lowest here. So that will tell me that the Kriging is the best algorithm to use for my data. Now, uh, what I want to do as well is to analyze a few uh, wells in particular a little bit closer, and I have selected the wild dog well, again, which you remember have the highest values. So the delta z is consistently high through all um, gridding algorithms. The Kriging gives me slightly lower value, but yet still it's, it's quite high. So now I'll go back to my map, and I'll check the wild dog well on my map. And as you can see here, and this is the wild dog well, 
And this answers my question why those um, delta Zs are so high for the swell. The swell lies in the border of the grid, uh, far away from any well control, so the algorithm have no means uh, to, to uh, model the surface really well, so they will all extrapolate. So this answers the question and I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, I know why this well has such high errors. The princess well is the next one that I would like to look at. And again, this well has high uh, delta Z values for each gridding algorithm. They are slightly lower than the wild dog, but still they are very high. So again, have a look at the map. The princess well lies over here. And unlike the wild dog, a princess well lies in the area where there is a very good well control. So there is this big cluster of wells and there is no reason why the algorithms wouldn't be able to model the surface very well in this area. So that gives me uh, an indication that there is something maybe wrong with my interpretation. Maybe I have picked the horizon wrong in this well. Perhaps this well lies on the fault block and that's why the delta Z is so high. So there is another way of QCing your data through the cross-validation. And the last well I would like to look at is the champion well. And the champion well again gives me high delta Z for all gridding algorithms apart from Kriging. So the difference is that Kriging gives me significantly lower value over here. And it's around 74, minus 74. So coming back to my map again, the champion well is that this one over here. Um, and it lies in the deeper parts of the basin, far away from the well control, and very close to actually the area that I am interested in. So that is a good indication for me that Kriging is a very good algorithm to use for my data if I would like to model the surface in the area where there is no well control and deeper parts of the basin. Now, Otway Basin is very well documented in the seismic. And I will post the seismic data here for you as a ribbon map. So you can see it's, it's very dense, it's very detailed. And what I've done, I've used this data as an external drift for, uh, for my Kriging. So it's, it's a kind of guiding um, data for, to guide my surface. So I gridded the wells using the Kriging method, but I use this data as an external drift, as an external guide uh, to, my, uh, to my grid. So it's an extra input data to my grid. And this is how the grid looks like. And as you can see, it's much more detailed, it's much more accurate than all the other grids that I've done before. And this is because there is extra seismic data, obviously. Now, uh, I've also made a cross-section through this um, through this area, specifically through the area of interest, so through my red rectangle. And it goes somewhere here and goes through my re red rectangle and then ends up in this cluster of wells over here. And having a look at the cross-section in Petrosis, these are all my grids now. Um, marked on this cross-section. And first of all, what we can see is that between 200 and 300 shot points and between 800 and 1,000, those surfaces, they look pretty much the same. They are very close to each other, so there is not much difference between them. When we look back on the map, we will notice that between 200 and 300, we have good well control. And between 800 and 1,000, again, there is a very good well control. So that's why those algorithms, they will not vary that much. They will just predict the surface similarly. Uh, whereas between 300 and 800, there is absolutely no well control. And this is where those algorithms, they will predict the surface slightly different. This is where they will vary. So coming back to the cross section, between 300 and 800, we'll see that the difference between one top grid and the bottom grid is about 25, 250 sorry, kilometers, so uh, meters, sorry. So that's quite high difference. And again, looking at this um, cross section, we will not be able to tell which gridding algorithm is the best and which surface is really modeled. Uh, the best for, for this area. So I will post now uh, one more line here, and that will be the Kriging of external drift, so the one that uh, takes into account also seismic data. And as you can see again, this is a very detailed line, so it's got much more data in it, the red line here. 
And one thing uh, which we can see straight away is that one of those algorithms, one of those grids, they follow this line very well. This, it follows this line very well. And this is the Kriging method. So that proves again that the Kriging method is the best to use for my data when I don't have any extra 2D seismic data to use. And just quickly going back to my Excel spreadsheet, I've also uh, put this uh, Kriging with external drift uh, results um, on my joint spreadsheet. And you can see that um, the lowest results are again uh, associated with the Kriging of external drift, which is understandable we have a, because we have extra data. Yet Kriging is the closest method and the closest, the lowest result next to Kriging of external drift. So I think this is, you, you will agree that this proves um, that grid, my, my best method to use for, for gridding this data is Kriging. And just coming back to the demonstration, the presentation, sorry. I hope also after this presentation you agree with me that cross-validation is an easy and quick to run uh, method in Petrosis. And it can be invaluable in examining a number of issues. And that can include uh, finding the outliers, so the erroneous wells, the erroneous input data points. Also, uh, finding out which gridding algorithm gives me the best prediction of the surface, so which is the preferred gridding technique or parameters, as well as um, what is the error that I can expect if I am uh, drilling a new well location based on the computed grid. So thank you very much for your attention. And I will now uh, unmute everyone. And uh, there is time for questions. So if you have any questions, please let me know.